So we recently got some news with Honkai Star Rail that's gonna change a lot of the content that was released before launch. Now, those of you that aren't familiar with what I'm talking about yet, there's three different units that got their kits adjusted, and there's one in particular that I know a lot of you guys are gonna be extremely excited about. So let's go ahead and hop into it. And as it's stated here, currently we have the adjustments of the skills or traces, but we don't yet have the modifiers that we can see right here of what these are gonna be at launch. Now, this is important because that's where the buffs and the nerfs are gonna happen, where everything we're gonna be discussing in today's videos are just adjustments to their kit. So for instance, in the closed beta, it could be something, but then once we get to the launch of the game, this could be something significantly less or significantly more, which is gonna determine how much more viable these units are gonna be at launch or if they just became devalued. But if you're subscribing to the channel, if any of these major changes happen where they become devalued, I'll definitely make a video on it to keep you up to date. So that way you don't get tripped up depending on old outdated information that was from the closed beta test without the new numbers. But enough of that, let's get into the actual changes. And so the first one is gonna be with Branya. So in the past, she was able to use her skill one. And what this does, is it advances whoever it's used on's turn to be next. And so she was able to use it on herself which would allow her to go next and then use it on herself again. And essentially she would be put in a position where she was able to gain free energy, which pretty much kept her ultimate skills up time, like always up because she was able to continuously produce that energy based on being able to use this skill one on herself. And now the adjustment is, is that it's still gonna have that same effect where it advances everyone's turn forward 100%, except for when she uses it on herself. When she uses it on herself, it's gonna have all of the other effects, but she's just not gonna be able to go next. Now, depending on who you ask, this is either a bug or it was a feature. And so my thoughts are, I don't really feel like this affects Branya's viability as much. I feel like she's just as viable as she was before. And like, this is really gonna be fixing something that I, me personally, I think may have been a bug that a lot of people in the closed beta who were theory crafting were able to figure out that probably wasn't meant to be a feature in the game. And so this is mainly just clean up on their end for something that was found during the closed betas. But I do wanna reiterate this so it's not lost in translation. Depending on what these modifiers are for these units is going to determine how viable they are. These are just wording adjustments to their traces. So let's scroll down and get into the next character and that's gonna be Welt. Now these changes were made to his traces and not necessarily his skills. So in the past, his trace allowed him to do increased damage on his ultimate. Now my interpretation of the new wording is that after his ultimate is used, whoever is hit by this ultimate is going to receive extra damage for X amount of turns from any attacks. Now, I think this is a pretty significant buff to Welt, just because in the past you were depending on Welt to do the damage, but with these new traces, now you're going to be able to have anyone else on your team contribute to doing this damage. Now, as they say in this article, it's a little bit vague, so they're unsure if this buff is going to be for himself only or for the entire team. My thoughts are based on this wording is it could be the entire team. So that's kind of where my take comes from. And now Well was already an extremely viable unit just based on the way that he was able to manipulate turns by decreasing the opponent's speed. And for whatever it was worth, he was the only imaginary unit at the launch when the closed beta happened. And so overall, I think this is a pretty solid change for his kit. I just wanted to take a break in this video to say thank you guys so much for the amount of support that you've shown. We were pushing a thousand subscribers before launch. We have a few days left. So if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribing to the channel and liking this video. I'm going to have a lot of guides to get you ready for the launch of the game, but I'll quit interrupting this video and let you guys get back to it. And then last, the person that we've been waiting for the most is gonna be Himiko. Now I know a lot of y'all were mad. Y'all Honkai Impact fans were like extremely mad because she wasn't as viable with her initial kit. But if these changes are legit, this is gonna change a lot of things when it comes to her viability. Now this one similar to Welt is gonna be on her trace as opposed to her skill. And in the past, it was stated that basic attacks that Himiko does has an 80% chance to burn an enemy for three turns, inflicting that dot damage. Now, basic attacks is the key word. The change is Himiko's attacks have X amount of chance to inflict the burn on enemies for X amount of turns. Now, this is going to be something significant because instead of it just being binded to basic attacks, we know Himiko has that passive where, you know, she does the AOE attack after a certain amount of stacks. I forgot what exactly it is, but you know what I'm talking about, where she's gonna be able to attack an AOE attack to all enemies, 
even when it isn't her turn. And then we have her skill and her ultimate. And now depending on if they count that passive as an attack, even if they don't, I feel like this is a massive buff to Himiko's kit just because it's going to be able to significantly increase the amount of like DPS she's going to be able to dish out since she's going to have more ways to inflict that burn damage on enemies. Now it is going to change and depend a lot on if they adjust this X percentage and X amount of turns since they are allowing for this to be inflicted in more ways than just their basic attack. But overall, I would say that this is a pretty optimistic and bright change for Himiko in terms of her viability. And now we have Klar and Gpard. And for those of you that haven't noticed yet, these skills were released for the characters that are in the beginner's banner. So these are the five units in the beginner's banner that you can get. So when we have units like Zila and uh, Jing Yuan, which I don't remember if I mentioned this earlier, those are probably going to come at a later time. And now the rest of these changes are going to be light cone changes that are attached to the characters. So we have like the Welt light cone, the Geopard, the Himiko, etc, etc. And I'm not going to spend too much time reading these because these are just gonna be damage modifiers or like modifier increases or decreases, not necessarily changes to their skills. So I'll do like a brief, slow scroll through all of these. So if you ever wanna pause it at any moment to maybe see the modifiers that were adjusted, feel free, but I'm not gonna waste your time reading these. But overall, these are some pretty positive changes for these five-star units. We just like, I keep saying over and over and over, we need to keep an eye on these damage modifiers when the launch of the game comes or they're officially released. But if you're looking for more Honkai Star Rail content like this, I'll have a video linked right here where we go into the future units coming to the game and discuss the kits of those units that have already been revealed.